everyone welcome to the innovation lab in this video i'm going to show you how to make a cheap and simple but also very effective diy digital battery capacity tester using this uh, 20 dollar dc digital meter that you can easily get online so have you been in that situation where you have a battery system but for some reason you can't quite tell the energy storage capacity of that battery so this could be a battery that you built as a DIY project or a battery that you bought from a manufacturer that uh, for, some, for some reason you don't trust the rating on that battery or maybe just because you're curious you want to you wanna verify. So the question is how do you do that? So what I've seen in the past is uh, multiple different uh, car battery load testers or other uh, battery testers that that kind of measure the voltage level of your battery and try to tell you uh, how much life your battery has or how much capacity that your battery has. But that is not exactly what I'm talking about. So what I'm talking about is the storage capacity. How much energy can I put into my battery given how old that battery is or how long I've used it? So how do you find out specifically? Every battery has two very important parameters that we all know about and we consider when designing our system or buying a battery system. So the first one will be the voltage of the battery in volts and the second one will be the amp hour rating of that battery in ampere hours or milliampere hours. So if you if you do the math and multiply those two values, the, vo the voltage and the amp hour rating of the battery, you can get the energy stored in the battery or the expected energy to be stored in that battery in watt hours. So, which is very important, you're using your battery to drive a load. That's what tells you how much load you put on your battery on your system and how long that your battery system is going to last with that load. But then, how do you know how much your battery can hold? So, for example, if this battery is rated for 12 volts, uh, 30,000 milliampere hours, which is the same as 12 volts, 30 ampere hours so if you do the math so it tells us that uh, this battery is capable of storing an energy of 360 watt hours assuming we can charge the battery to 100 percent so the question then is how can we know that truly truly this battery system right here can give us that value that my friends was the reason why i built this device right here and this device is my diy digital battery capacity tester and this is the same dc digital meter that i made a review video for and i've actually used it for multiple projects that i've done on this channel so but then i realized that this very dc digital meter has a very unique feature that will allow us to accomplish this function so as you see on the screen here this uh, dc digital meter actually shows you the accumulated energy uh, going through this device in watt hours so be it when you're charging your battery it shows you how much energy that the battery has accumulated over the charge period in watt hours or when you're discharging the battery uh, it shows you how much energy that you have taken from the battery to put into your load over the discharge period in also in watt hours so where all of this comes in is this now helps us to know how much energy are we putting into our battery and you can tell given the voltage rating of the battery multiplied by the amp power rating of the battery it will give you the energy storage capacity of that battery in watt hours so for example for this test i'm going to be using my lithium phosphate battery pack this is a 12 volt lithium phosphate battery pack that is rated for 30 ampere hours or 30,000 milliampere hours so if you do the math this battery pack is supposed to give us some things being equal is supposed to give us about 360 watt hours of storage so that my friends is basically the, the theory behind this device or what we're going to use it for again as i've mentioned this is no no new device this is a, a dc digital meter that you can buy for 20 dollars on ebay or, or amazon i got this from amazon but then the concept of what we do here at the innovation lab is to kind of look for cheap alternatives 
things that were basically designed for a different function, but then we figure out a way to use it to solve multiple purposes. Just like what we're doing with this DC to DC boost converter, showing how we can use it, not just as a boost converter, but also as a charger. So we're, we're now trying to apply the same concept to this DC digital meter. All right, so looking at this, you can kind of tell that this is a custom design. I had to make a 3D uh, design using Google SketchUp on my computer to make sure that, um, you know, I come up with something that looks good, that it's gonna kind of be my own unique design. So then after I did that, you know, with all the right measurements and everything, just to make sure that, that I will be able to fit the DC digital meter in the enclosure without any issues. Also be able to have XT60 connectors, one on the input and one on the output, and also to add a cover to the design. So then after that, all I had to do was load the design to my 3D printer, and when I printed the whole thing, which basically took less than uh, two or three hours to, to print. Then after that, I applied some paint to just to make it look good, give it uh, some good finishing. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, open this guy up and show you what I did on the inside. All right, so here is the build of the DIY digital battery tester. Um, this can also be a load tester. So I'm um, just going to show what I did here, which is very simple. So I'm using two XT60 connectors. I believe that these connectors can handle up to 60 amps. They are rated for 60 amps per pin. And I'm sure they can handle up to 100 amps if, if it's just a short duration test. So here, looking inside here, you can see what we have here, which will be the DC digital meter. So this meter has an awesome display. So it looks exactly as you see it in this picture and you will see it when I power up the device. What I have here is the negative line uh, going to the battery or going to the load goes in opposite direction to the, uh, the flow of current as you can see in that arrow there that indicates which direction it should go. I think that direction is for the return path, you know, going from the uh, load back to the source or the battery back to the source so here is the input and here is your output so if you don't connect it that way when you power it up your current measurements will have a negative sign all right so that's pretty much it i'm just gonna heat shrink this uh, these here and uh, talk in the cable and uh, kind of make it look nice and uh, close the box and that's it okay, for the testing so what I'm going to do will be to charge these two lithium phosphate battery packs. These battery packs are exactly identical. I built them using the same battery cells, the same BMS and uh, pretty much same components. So I'm going to charge them. So let's call this one battery A and battery B. So I'm going to charge them separately and we are going to kind of capture a time lapse video of the charging. And in the end, we'll kind of compare, you know, the results between battery A and battery B in terms of uh, the energy storage capacity that we were able to kind of measure using this experiment. All right, my friends, let's get to it. Right. So the first thing we need to do before we plug in the battery will be to clear the memory to make sure we reset the watt hour accumulated uh, value there as you can see it says one watt hour so we have to clear that so to give us a precise measurement of this battery and you clear the memory by holding down the button here that says key for a few seconds then it resets it to zero as you can see here all right now we go ahead and we plug in the battery and uh, we adjust the charging current to uh, depending on how fast we want to charge the battery but for this exercise it's always better to not uh, force charge the battery you have to charge the battery as slow as you can so that way you get you know good uh, values in into your battery all right so now our battery is connected but because our charging current was dialed down all the way down to zero, so basically the 12.3 volts that we are measuring here is essentially the battery voltage. All right, so now let's go ahead and 
adjust the charging current to 10 amps. So I am choosing 10 amps because this lithium phosphate battery can handle high charging currents and also I would like to charge this battery pack um, as fast as I can. My goal would be in to charge it fully in about two to three hours. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Alright, as you can see here, our charging current is now set at 10 amps and the battery voltage just rose up to 13.2 volts and input power, uh, kind of a steady state power going into the battery right now is at uh, 133 watts. So as you can see, the accumulated energy in watt hours is now at 2 watt hours. So we're going to keep an eye on that as we go through this process to see how much uh, accumulated energy in watt hours that this battery can actually hold during the charge cycle. So while this is happening, the only thing you can really do is to go do something else, do something to have some fun and come back and check your battery and keep an eye on it to make sure everything is charging very well. And uh, for this section, I'm going to do like a time lapse to show you guys what's going on within this two hour uh, charge cycle. All right, let's get to that. Also, I decided to do a uh, discharge time lapse to measure the amount of energy that these batteries are supplying to our load over time and that will help us also compare the results between the, uh, the amount of energy accumulated over the charge period and the amount of energy that we actually delivered to our load. So that will kind of, uh, you know, kind of consolidate our measurements to tell us that, okay, what we measured during the charge cycle was correct. All right, my friends, I am glad you made it to the end of this video. So the goal of this video was to use this DIY digital battery capacity tester to see if we can accurately measure the energy storage capacity of our battery system in watt hours. So as you saw in the video, we were able to measure the storage capacity of battery A and battery B in watt hours. So for battery A, we measured 225 watt hours. For battery B, we measured 230 watt hours. So battery A and battery B combined gave us about 455 watt hours. Then also during the discharge cycle, we were able to combine the two batteries together in series because my power inverter is a 24 volt uh, power inverter. So battery A and battery B combined during the discharge cycle gave us, as you can see here, a total uh, delivered energy of 413 watt hours. So overall, at a constant discharge load of 285 watts, we can say that the efficiency of our battery system between the charge cycle and the discharge cycle was about 90%. And for those of us who understand the amp hour rating of batteries, you will also know that the amount of energy you get out of your battery is not really a function of the amp hours directly. I know that for some of us, the question might be, why did we get less energy out of the battery system than what we actually put in during the charge cycle? So what I would say to that is there is a lot to be considered when you are discharging your battery. The amount of load that you have on the battery, the amount of current that you are drawing from the battery plays a role in how much energy you, you get out of that battery. And also I would like to say that that sounds like a good topic for the next uh, battery charging video. So if you like videos like this, if you found this video uh, entertaining, if you, if you learned something from this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Innovation Lab 
to see more like it in the future. All right, my friends, I will see you guys in the next video.